Hey there guys, it's Rick here. Hope you're all doing extremely well out there. I know I am. Hope you enjoyed that little video at the start of this video, because that's going to be the subject of today's video. God, I said video three times. What a tit. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I'm digressing already. We haven't even started the video. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about sweet picking. I, in actual fact, I don't think I've ever covered this topic in any of my videos, so I thought today would be an ideal opportunity to, to broach the subject. Um, so that's what we're going to be taking a look at. Um, we're going to be talking about the, the intro arpeggio sequence, but I'm going to give you some hints and tips as how to, uh, in terms of how to approach sweet picking and um, the kind of things that I do that hopefully you'll be able to apply to your playing to some benefit at least. Uh, before we do that, just a quick heads up, still 30% off downloads from my website. Great way to support what I do. Links are, the link is in the description box below. I uh, hope you're enjoying the quality of this video. I've just upgraded um, my lens. Uh, it's looking pretty sharp, I have to say. Um, so anyway, I'm definitely digressing now. Right, so we're going to be taking a look at sweet picking and we're going to be basing it around that sequence that I put together just to give you something to practice, to take away and practice. Okay, so um, let's get straight to the sequence and then what we'll do is we'll talk about the techniques involved and, and how I approach it, okay? So uh, I'm using the neck pickup for, for, the, for the whole of this sequence, so but it's up to you, you can use whatever you like. It's in the key of E. Okay, and what I do instead of actually playing the arpeggio like this uh, with the notes of the, uh, the chord in sequence, uh, what I do is I drop out the third degree on the bottom E string and just play root to fifth, like so. I really like the sound that that creates, that sort of wide interval between the first and the fifth. And it really helps to, to, for, the, for the arpeggio to flow, for the picking sequence to flow. Um, so I, I like doing that. So that's what we're going to be doing throughout the entirety of this, this particular sequence. So we're going to start here, E. Uh, we're going to go 12, 14, 14, 13, 12, 12 and then 14 at the top here. So 12, 14, 14, 13, 12, 12, 14. Okay. Uh, sorry, 16. What am I talking about? 16. Um, so yeah, uh, let me do that again. 12, 14, 14, 13, 12, 12, 16. Okay. And then we're going to pull off. That gives us ample opportunity to, to switch positions with a pick. We do a downstroke, but we can prepare it in the upward position, ready to do the upstrokes. Okay, a couple of things that we can talk about with this, because we can apply, once we've got one, one pattern with the right hand and the left hand, um, in, all, you know, in terms of what we're picking and what we're not, uh, you can apply it to every single arpeggio, and that makes it really, really easy. So we're gonna go down, 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 up, off, up, 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 okay. Um, right, the, the main thing here is we've got to make sure uh, that the clarity is good uh, on the inner strings. This is a huge problem with guitar players, um, especially when they take the tempo up. Uh, the, the inner voices become really blurry and we can't really hear what's going on. So that should be the priority. So even if you have to play, in fact, I advise you to play it slower and try and maintain that clarity when you're switching strings. Okay. Okay, the way that I'm fingering this with the left hand, I'm going first finger, then third, 
Um, I was hopping there, but actually I'm, I roll. So I'm barring and rolling as I go. Like the third there, and then I'll roll it, shift, index finger, roll. Um, you may be able to find a way where you, you're fingering each individual note uh, to circumvent that, uh, having to, to do that. Uh, the guys like Jason Richardson do, do those kind of arpeggios where he fingers every single note rather than, you know, in order to avoid playing bars. So, but it's totally up to you. This is how I do it, anyway. So, and we, we want to make sure when we're doing sweep picking that the pick is falling and coming to rest on the adjacent string. So it's falling through each string. We do not want to be separating any of the strokes at all. So it's, it's quite, a, when you're doing it at a slow tempo, it's kind of like applying tension and relax. Applying tension, relax. Applying tension, relax. So we're going to the next string with the same stroke uh, using the minimum movement, the shortest possible distance, okay? Okay, so now we've figured out what we're doing there, uh, we can apply it to the next arpeggio sequence. And it's basically just E augmented. So we're taking the fifth degree, raising it, everything else stays the same. Again, this is a bit of a pain because when we get to the, the B and the, the, the G and the B strings, we've got to roll. But again, if you can come up with a different fingering, by all means, use it. That's how I do it. Down, 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 down. Then roll the second finger, pull off, up, 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 up. Uh, when it comes to this note, which is repeated, uh, like that. I use an upstroke, but you can use a down if you wish. Okay, so that's the augmented chord, E augmented. Then we go to this chord here. That's basically a C sharp minor in first inversion. So it's this, but we're playing the root in uh, the third degree uh, in the bass, which makes it a first inversion. So again, following the same principle. Oops. Okay, keeping everything nice and clean. Um, what I try and do is avoid too much gain, and that really helps. So I've got, I usually use my guitar volume to control it. I usually put it on around, uh, for this kind of thing, around about seven, uh, maybe eight, I don't know. Experiment with it. And then we're going to do this. So it's like it creates an E11 kind of sound. So it's, um, D major over an E bass, okay? So, same fingering for the, uh, sorry, same picking pattern for the right hand. Being economical with the movement and keeping nice and relaxed, okay? And then we're back to E major. I can't remember how many times to repeat that. A couple of times, let's say. Um, so, okay, now we're gonna go down by step, uh, which is, this is a B major chord in first inversion here. So we've got the third in the bass. It really works well dropping the extra note out on the bottom E string, of course, like arpeggios like this. Okay, that's twice. And we're going to move down by step. Okay. Uh, now we're going to go to a B minor chord. So we're just flattening every third degree. So. Okay, the voice leading is very important here. It's important to just be aware of what's going on when it moves from chord to chord because it's subtle changes by, by step, by semitone, usually. Okay, so. Okay, then we're gonna move down to this chord here, which is A major in first inversion. Same. Then we're gonna go to A minor. And we play it four times. So if I play it nice and slowly, okay, 
okay, play that twice, then the augmented. C sharp minor first inversion. D over E, then back to E again. B major first inversion. B minor first inversion. A major first inversion. B A minor first inversion. <laughs> and then finish on the E. Okay, it kind of sounds like it wants to keep going and going, but I, you know, I didn't want to do too much. But uh, anyway, that is the, the, uh, the whole arpeggio sequence. So just remember, just to, just to recap on what I was talking about here, make sure you concentrate on complete clarity with every single note wherever possible. It's very, very hard to do when you start bumping up the tempo to maintain that clarity, like I said before, especially on the inner strings. Uh, it, it, it's very, very difficult, but you know, guitar playing isn't easy. You know, it's a challenge, and you know, if you want the best results, you've got to put the work in. You know, you approach it superficially, you'll get superficial results. Simple as that. So think about that. Think about the relaxation when you play. Just letting the pick fall through the strings. Don't separate the strokes, and uh, everything will work out great. So that's about it for today. Again, um, if you want to support me. 30% off um, downloads from my website, link is in the description box below. Uh, follow me on Instagram, subscribe, click the notification button. And uh, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.